We started out at the Kentucky Fried Chicken on uh, State Street and 39th. It was the it was the original location of the old meeting we had, uh, but apparently they'd have some problems with their uh, sewer line backing up, and a lot of people started complaining about the uh, the stench in the room. So we lo started looking around, and we eventually found uh, another restaurant to meet at. And uh, that one didn't work out because uh, we didn't have an, uh, a room that was exclusive to us. We had diners coming in and out, and uh, it was just not conducive to having a private meeting. The next, our next venue was at the Stonewall Center. Uh, it was a great meeting room, and uh, we just felt it was time to move on. And so we decided, since it was nice out, we would move to the Liberty Park. The conspirators in this conspiracy represent less than 3% of the population in our country. Okay, that's a minority. Not even 1%. And then how, so what about the rest of the 98, 99%? Are we going to let them rule us with fear? And I say no. You know, I, I've been associated with, with many movements, the John Byrne Society, the, the LaRouche Group, uh, We the People. You know what? I, I don't see anything really going to come out of that. I want to see change on this planet. And I don't care how it's accomplished, and I don't care who we have to network to get the job done. Okay? And we've got to come together as a coalition and stop this goddamn name calling. Alright? And I'm angry about it. Alright? We've got to work together as a coalition because the dark side, they've got their shit together, people. Do you guys have a lighter or something? We got you guys some candles back here. Did you? Oh, thank you. The problem is, uh, Jim is allergic, so we have to put them back there. He okay. hates the candles, but yeah, we've got, uh, I think I've got a uh, thing right here. See, we even got a deodorizer in here, and we even had them come and spray a deodorizer on the carpets yeah. and everything. Yeah, Check. They were going in that room. We've been bleaching that whole room, like, for the past week. Sorry, my side smells here. All right, it's uh, seven o'clock. Why don't we uh, get started here? Now, there is a thing called Nasara. How many people are not aware of Nasara? You're not aware of Nasara, Margaret? It's been a while. Okay. You're not aware of Nasara? How about you, sir? Okay. Nasara is a... Acronym. Is an acronym, thank you, Sally, for National Economic Stabilization and Recovery Act. It was a secret law that was passed in the year 2000 by the Clinton Congress, signed into law by Bill Clinton. A gag order was uh, subsequently placed on it by the Supreme Court simply because there, it involved too much change within the banking community it would have caused total chaos if people were allowed to know to find out about it people would stop paying their mortgages their credit cards their car payments and it would have resulted in, in, in worldwide economic chaos uh, the gag order was uh, extended to high-level people in the government 
uh, it was leaked out beginning in around 2001 and there was a woman named Dove that started to uh, put out information about the Nassara law. Nassara is has several key provisions. Number one would eliminate the IRS. Okay, everybody in favor of that? Any, any dissenters to that? No. Yes. If you are, we'll, we'll shoot you right now. <laughs> Not. No, just kidding. So, IRS goes away. <clears throat> Another provision is debt elimination. How many people have credit card debt that they'd like to see erased? Well, under the SARA, it's gone, wiped out. Not, not a. How many people have a mortgage on their house right now? It's gone, wiped out. The SARA to me, when I think, uh, well, right now I owe something like uh, three hundred ninety, ninety-eight dollars, and uh, I can only afford to take out fifteen dollars from my, uh, from, for, you know, from. That's in my cash reserve, but I have to build up my cash reserve again. But um, to eliminate that, that would kind of that would be kind of helpful. Number three, it gets rid of the entire United States Congress and Senate. Gone. That would be so wonderful. Gone. It gets rid of <laughs> President Bush and all of his cabinet members. Now, this is going to sound so far out. You're going to think this is like from Star Trek or something. Okay, but. I, I'm getting a witness myself that this is truth, okay? And really truth is, is so far from what, how they portray it on the news, it's almost backwards, everything. They lie to us, any chance they can get. You know, I, in 1984 I ran for United States Congress and I had a TV interview, right? They went and they interviewed me for 20 minutes. And they put me on the nightly news, and they put a 30-second little clip. They took one thing I said out of context, and it made me sound like a, a, a right-wing wacko radical. But this is what we heard happen over in the, uh, Iraq. As you know, our illustrious president is trying to get us into a war with Iraq against the whole world. The whole world is against it, right? Okay. He's already moved tanks and, and heavy armored equipment and surveillance teams and all this into the borders around Iraq. And we know what the forces can do to those tanks. Right. Well, here's what the forces did. Okay. Now, by the forces, I'm talking about extraterrestrial forces. Okay. They took and removed all the troops up into the ships. Oh. They beamed them up into the ships and left the, and they left the equipment. And then they disable all the equipment so it won't work. And then they drop stone markers, big stone markers with big high letters, saying, we will return your troops after Nasara is announced. Hello, dear friends and white knights. It sounds like there is a competition among white knight groups to see who can get a Nasara announced the soonest. <laughs> now, that, now that the white knight leaders in charge of Nasara have learned that there are three other plans to get Nasara announced, the white knight leaders are changing their date. The white knight leaders are now choosing to do the Nasara announcement several days sooner than they previously planned. The members of the white knight group who told Pat Sajak to talk about a world-changing announcement this Sunday also have the support of the world court. The white knight leaders do, do not have the ability to stop these other white knights from getting the SARA announced. Therefore, the white knight leaders have decided to change their announcement date in an effort to be the ones who get the SARA announced. <laughs> Is Dove. I don't think nobody really knows who she is as far as what, who her real name is, her identity. Um, I know she lives in Olympia, Washington. She was in the intelligence service, so she has a lot of contacts that trust her. 
Uh, she has knowledge of the Faction 1, Faction 2, and Faction 3 in the government and in the CIA, FBI um, intelligence circles and governmental circles. Um, but it wasn't until Four Winds 10 started his, her, their website that I realized uh, that and they started printing it because I never have. I called, I think, one time the phone number, but I didn't have 50 cents a minute to. <laughs> Hello, dear friends. It's Sunday, April 28th. I'm told either the White Knights will announce Nisara today or this evening, or St. Germain will cause the announcement of Nisara on April 29th. In a stroke of financial genius, St. Germain is doing a legal corporate eviction of the current administration. <laughs> Truly, friends, this is going to ensure that we do see Nisara announced. Our prosperity program deliveries of the first 31 prosperity programs are still due to be in our hands by April 30th. A reminder, St. Germain has control of whether we receive our funding from his World Trust, which amounts to over 50% of our full funding amount. And St. Germain has zero tolerance for anyone who is anti-Nasara. He's worked for hundreds of years to bring us Nasara's blessings and he expects us to support Nisara in all we do. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. The way I see it happening is first the announcement will happen, and then that will be followed by the resignations of Bush, Cheney, Ashcroft, and, and all of his cabinet members. Uh, they will be replaced by an interim government that's already been selected uh, by the uh, the White Knights, who is who are the human component of who's doing the changes within 90 or within um, uh, 96 hours following the announcement, uh, we will also have the Ascended Masters appear on our television screens and introduce themselves to us because they play a huge part in the evolution of this planet. Okay. Uh, after that happens, the prosperity funds will be released and uh, we will begin to work with our new government that's interim. Then there will be another more formal, long-lasting uh, election take place for the four-year program. And personally, I believe that Jesus Christ uh, will be the head of that government. Bill Clinton, um, despite what people think, uh, how, how lo uh, low life he was, how he had sex with Monica Lewinsky and all that, that, I think he was set up basically on that. And he knows how evil this Illuminati conspiracy is, okay? And even though his maternal grandmother was a Rockefeller, deep down in his heart, he, he really loathed these people. Bill Clinton could be the interim leader. At some point after Nassara's announcement, the funds will be released. People will, will receive funding letters, they'll go to their banks, and they'll receive uh, uh, large sums of money. Money coming from nowhere, almost falling in your lap. It's like, you know, you're supposed to like get uh, interesting checks every month. <laughs> thousands of dollars or something like that to that effect. Prosperity programs were were set up by Ascended Master Saint Germain uh, over 250 years ago when he walked the planet. Uh, he set up a world trust that today is worth uh, decisillions or, or I don't even know how to pronounce it. So many so many zeros, it's, it's just mind-boggling. There's uh, just a ton of programs. I, I, don't, I don't even know a third of them, but um, these programs were set up and designed so that only people of good intention would, would get into them. Like the farm claims had claims writers that would go around and talk to people, and uh, it was word of mouth strictly. They weren't allowed to advertise. Nine years ago, 1993 or 92, I had opportunity 
I got word from a friend of mine who wasn't here before she went in. His name was Mac. Mac and I were very close, extremely close, like brothers, like you and I, and like here and a few of the other guys. A lot of them had uh, small entry fees, like the farm claims you had to put down $300. I said, there's no way in God's earth to come up with 300 I plotted and I schemed to be able to have the money. I prayed to whatever God I prayed to. And when I got it, because I had a free paycheck in March of that year, the last paycheck, I took that entire paycheck and bought myself the papers. Why did people do it? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, they just felt like it was going to happen. I didn't know it at that time, and, and I was skeptical because I just didn't know where it was going to go. And so um, I started to participate. Well, well, that I was going to get $37 million. Hey, to me, that is still a heck of a lot of money. <laughs> First year went by. Second year went by. Okay. Was I a fool? Third year went by. Fourth year went by. Ten years went by. And it has been subdued. It has been set aside. It has been ignored for years because of the total change, I'm sure, that is about to occur when this takes place. As most people know, the mass prosperity deliveries and funding will only be done after NISAR is announced. All of us need to do what we can to get NISAR announced for the benefit of the world, our loved ones, and ourselves. We on the Internet are now organizing NISAR action teams. We know that we must contribute our efforts in order for Nassara to be announced. I've rarely asked you calling this number to do anything, but we all need to do all we can to ensure Nassara is announced soon. Got some pizza there. What's left of it? Do you want it? I got a belly egg shell ready. I ate one for them. Y'all want it? I do know right now. All right, this is Sherlock A. Collins with you uh, in a few minutes. Uh, soon after news, we're going to get started here. We got uh, uh, our guest here is uh, Jim. We're going to talk about Nasara. That's the National Economic Restabil Stabilization and Recovery Act. So we're going to get some uh, history and, and some updates on what Nassara is all about. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Jim and when he's done speaking and saying what he needs to uh, say, he will at that time open it up for callers. Since he is a guest, we'll take uh, 10 minutes per caller with the right to call back. But however, remember this, first time callers get top priority over second time callers. The second time callers will get top priority over third time callers. So that's the way it is. Jim, welcome here to the studio. Thank you, Sherlock. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I, I want to thank uh, RJ for setting this up. I know that he's a good friend of yours. And oh, yeah, I like RJ. And uh, normally, uh, anybody that he likes, I like. But there's been one, maybe. But forget it. But well, we we're not talking about that. We won't go there. Okay. okay. All right, I'd like to I'd like to open up with a, a brief invocation. I'd like to call upon the creator of all that is to uh, be here today, that uh, people's hearts and minds will be open to the concepts that we're going to be talking about, that uh, the uh, the station will be protected against any uh, any uh, problems uh, that we have sometimes uh, with interruptions. And <clears throat> I'd like to start out by telling a little bit about what Nasara is. Nasara is the framework, the legal framework, that will restore a constitutional government to this planet, okay? And it's already passed into law, it's already been through Congress, and it's already been signed into law by Bill Clinton. 
So they had everything ready to go uh, one year later. It was scheduled to be announced in October of uh, 2001. On September 11th, uh, the announcement was going to be made in New York City by Alan Greenspan. As we know, uh, that morning, two planes hit the World Trade Center and preempted the, the announcement of Nassara. Okay? This was a desperate act by those dark forces that would want to continue in power, continue to rob us and, and, and rape us and keep us in slavery. I'm a home caregiver. I was taking care of an elderly gentleman and uh, we turned the TV on because he liked to watch TV when he was eating breakfast and we saw it actually happen on television and we watched it the whole day. Jeanette came running house over there, uh, came running out when I was cleaning the restrooms and I uh, see if there's any towels and toilet paper that needs to be cleaned and she comes running out and with with one of the clients and goes, uh, they just hit the one tower and they're just coming in from the other one. I says, the first thing that I said was, were they terrorists? Because days before that, it seemed like I was seeing planes being, uh, uh, you know, flying into buildings. We got up about an hour after the first, shortly before the second plane hit the towers and she was in tears watching it and I, I just couldn't believe what I was watching. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I, I and I I felt at the time that it was our own people that did it. I felt it was the CIA and our own government behind it. I did not feel that it was bin Laden I, I, I didn't ever believe it was Iranian terrorists or anything like that. I, I knew it was, it was planned and executed by elements within our own government. The dark has issued you a monumental challenge that you can and will overcome. Remember who you are and that you are never alone. The pronouncements of heaven are made possible much more intensive surveillance of the dark ones. This in turn has allowed increased interactions between those who are working to transform your world and us. Now do you understand that part? Remember 9-11 was allowed to happen on a spiritual level but even our galactic helpers were clueless that it was going to happen. So it was to see how we could work as a team and what could be. Their sacrifice brought us to a consciousness level unsurpassed. And the Galactic Federation had to find that out also. They were caught off guard, but not the spiritual hierarchy. They honored the dead. Greetings. 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 Mother and the light of the most, most radiant, radiant ones, ones in, in the office of the Christ and only in the office of the Christ. We invoke the loving energies of St. Germain and the Violet Flame. Right now, the biggest thing the humans need to get is that they have to get over their anger. Yes, we know, 15,000 people died. 9-11. Not 3,000, 15,000. That is correct. And we were there instantly to beam them up out of that building as they were jumping out of those buildings. That is why in certain websites right after the day of 9-11, you could see shuttlecraft right next to the building. Can you up to your knowledge? Yes. Uh -huh. right. It would be the same for me also. I had my personal UFO uh, when I lived in southern Utah. It would follow me wherever I went. If, if I came up here to Salt Lake, it would travel right along with me. And I was not the only one that saw it. My boys saw it, and whoever was in my car was aware of it also. And if I would go down to St. George, 
it would follow me if I went down to Arizona. It would travel with me wherever I went for a whole summer. And I knew it was the same one because I, it was just a telepathic thing that I knew that that was the same one and he was communicating with me. Like Michael was saying when he was going up past Hill Field and then you'll see all of those. They're darker underneath, but still, some of them are just a different texture than the others that are around them. Most of them, the bigger ones, are just, I would say they're kind of like they're what we would call destroyers, but they're not destroyers of, of that. I'm just saying that they're, they're not the big motherships. Why do you think that um, they haven't tried to make contact or they haven't made contact? Um, if on Star Trek, when you're listening, the prime directive is no interference, <laughs> that's still part of it. Um, you can call in your spirit guides and helpers, that's not interfering. But uh, in an evolving, in, in something that's evolving like it is, and growing, uh, non-interference is their prime directive that they have to do unless the spiritual hierarchy gives them what is called a special dispensation or a special permission to interfere, which they've done occasionally. So some people have asked, well, why does Jesus need a spaceship? Well, it might be a little more comfortable coming through space in a ship than just zooming through with your head, you know? <laughs> Like Superman, <laughs> it might be a little more comfortable to be on a ship. <laughs> and um, also in my studies, I, I understand that there is a spaceship underneath the Sphinx at the Giza Pyramid. And um, that was his ship. Uh, this one, that very definitely is a spaceship right there. And we feel that this was a great ship. The larger ship and it doesn't show as well here but we were taking a picture of the chemtrail that formed an A for Archangel Michael and we just thought that was remarkable and then when it came back we've got all these little tiny ships all in through here and that very definitely is one and then see there's a shadow right here with a circle and then a line uh, we didn't see that when we took the picture but it certainly did show up that that's very definitely a benevolent being there. Peggy? Yes. If we're not going to be on the planet, why do we need the planet? I can't hear her back here. Can she stand there? That's a good question. Okay. Well, uh, maybe. What was the question? The question was. Come on in. Just repeat the question after they ask it. Okay, the, the question was and this is a very good question, is if we're not going to be on the planet, then why do we need the money? Okay, that's a very good question. I've asked that very same question myself. And what I believe, this is my belief, is that, that only certain people aren't going to be on the planet. There will be only around 40,000 of the first wave moving below the Earth's surface, and they will be leaving on the 21st October at 3 a.m. local time. I knew okay. no, You knew that. <laughs> because why? We remember in council, uh, you, myself, and uh, your wife, Adriana, had uh, uh, objected very strenuously about most of the members of the first wave, which we are, uh, having to go inner earth. Right. We have our bursts are up in the one of the ship that you command, and then the um, ship that uh, Commander uh, uh, Aton has and Commander Athena. Our soul group is uh, Marge and I, our daughter, our son, and our grandson. And uh, what's interesting about that was our grandson was born through Marjorie and lived for two hours and died. And then he reincarnated through our grandson. And 
So now he's back with us. So. He recognizes us. Every time he sees us, he jumps into our arms. Yeah. He's so happy to see us. <laughs> he's home again. So it's getting very close, people. It, the, the day of deliverance that's talked about by all the prophecies is upon us. Okay. I'm just, I just want to make it clear in my mind what's happening so I can make a choice. But suppose I'm of the first wave. You are first wave, ma'am. Thank you. Very simple, you are first wave. But suppose I, I should stay on the earth instead of getting a ship, and I, I don't know. When the time comes, your DNA will be in, is already encoded. The frequencies that are being beamed down or beamed across many different stargates will activate those particular coatings in you. I, Prince Omni Pi of Contra Samaria, binary star system located in the headquarters of Ramadan, do salute my brothers and sisters of the first wave who have served so well with me and around me and because of me and sometimes not booting me anybody else. <laughs> Everybody all over the galaxies are watching you now. They are applauding you because you have the audacity to do it. But yours has been one of the most advanced light waves of light workers that has ever been known for the last 40 billion light years. Yay! Wow. Congratulations! <laughs> Give yourself a big hand! <laughs> This has been looked about for many, not just millions of years, many billions of years. This has been foretold even in the annals of the times that weren't. Yes, sir? No. Okay, I, yes. have a, I have a problem. With, um, um, my son's father is a follower of Hatan. Or Hatan, I guess. Matter of Yeah. He is also a god, Hatan. Uh huh. Well, he is one of the more better ones that we've had for a long, long time. He was in the he was a god in Lesser Egypt for possibly nine thousand years. But do we need to worship him? Because I cannot worship him. I no, do he, not no, give him any not no, no, that, at he all. Never, he never sought you know, worship. He is not my no, whatever. He is not. He and I have a problem because no. with Matter my son's time, dad. Because Matter we, of time. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. My husband passed away about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility? Well, he's, uh, his spirit has been here with us while watching you. He's helping you out. See? Possibility we'll be together and doing this then. Oh, yes. We have our doubts. Oh, how we have our doubts. Because every once in a while I said, what if I am wrong? What a black knock on the head. And for, okay, when I first found out about myself, Okay, in 1979, 11, uh, okay, April the 9th at 11.45, I'm riding a motorcycle. The next thing, I ain't. I'm dead on a doornail. So what about the people that you knew previously while you were alive? I still have memory. They don't notice the difference? In your oh, behavior? they did. My mother noticed the difference. My mother noticed the difference. But her son was already a rocket scientist at the age of eight years old. Just because I got banged on the head, you know, I laid out on a desert floor for five and a half hours, totally dehydrated, looked like a shriveled prune. When I came back in, I noticed things were different. And I said, Mom, could any unclean thing come into my body while I was unconscious on the desert floor, because death never entered my mind. Mm -hmm. I was a set, an LDS 70. I know the church very well. There ain't nothing about the church I don't know. This little old 70 man of the Mormon church at that, within four months after the experience, I was excommunicated from the Mormon, Mormon church.
upon which to govern life. They teach love and compassionate service. They teach kindness and gentleness. They teach uh, a higher social life on a general basis. However, it, it is still a religion under the direction of humanity. They teach you uh, uh, good family relationships for the most part uh, and I've, I've learned how to become a public speaker there I was really shy if you would have known me you know <laughs> he was <laughs> I had to ask him to dance or we would have never met <laughs> <laughs> that's how shy I was so, he's yeah, come a long ways it, it, it really helped my uh, self-esteem self -esteem a lot and uh I, I had various leadership positions, so I learned some leadership uh, roles. I know with my bishop, I was bearing my testimony to him every every week. You know, I'd go in and stop in and say hi to him, and and uh, uh, basically, it made him feel uncomfortable that I was questioning certain habits they had that were policy, politics, or policy, and not doctrine and couldn't bring it to jive with, you know, the handbook or, or but it was scripture. It, and it was, they weren't doing it right. They weren't doing it right. I saw a lot of hypocrisy. I saw our bishop, our state presidents. I saw them uh, violating the Sabbath day, not keeping it holy. And I wondered, well, if they can't do it, then how can I become perfect enough to, to become a, a candidate for the celestial kingdom? And I always believed um, that there were scientific answers for how angels and God and Heavenly Father were. I thought, well, spaceships are cool. I realize all spaceships don't look silver, aren't made of some sort of metal that we don't have or understand on Earth, um, that they can sometimes look like Earth with a atmosphere skin travel through. I mean, I've always been into science fiction or fantasy, whatever you want to say. And uh, so I was claiming that Jesus and the angels, you know, the host of heavens were coming back on spaceships, and my bishop really didn't like that one. I was excommunicated from the LDS Church for believing the original teachings of the church itself. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I belong to the uh, fundamentalist I was part of a polygamist group for 10 years. No, you can't go, you can't go meet with these people, you can't study this, you can't, you can't, you can't. Can't read these books, can't be with these people, can't go to these meetings. Well, that sent hackles up on a lot of us. You know, that's not right. That is Satan's way, according to the gospel. You know, there was no agency, no choice and accountability. The choice they gave you, the accountability was, you'll just get X'd. And they did. They exed a lot of people. A lot of the people I hang out with that you've, you've met. Um, and there were hundreds of us. I have the great privilege of being in belonging to the Patriarchal Church of Jesus Christ for about 10 years. 
good thing it only took me 10 years to be excommunicated from that one, and it took me 40 years to be twice excommunicated from the Mormon Church. I was um, I was very popular in the in the Mormon ward that we lived in in Washington, and overnight I lost every friend that I had in the Mormon Church. We both did. Because yeah. they they teach their people that. If someone leaves the church, they're a son of perdition, and they're to be avoided because uh, they don't want uh, they don't want those people to be uh, influenced by those that leave. So, so I did virtually overnight. I didn't have any friends, and it was uh, it was kind of hard at first. My excommunication paper says conduct unbecoming a member. Basically, is what they did because I told them I would not. When the time came for my actual court, which was, they kind of postponed it for my daughter coming home in February. So from the time I turned it in in November, it just kind of sat on the back burner waiting for my missionary daughter to come home in February. And then I was exed in June of 93. I came across that paper a while back as I was cleaning some stuff up. And I was like, I've been exed for 10 years. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> My life changed. Wow. The kicker is, is LDS people believe in UFOs or off-world or ETs. It's part of our basic core belief. I guess that's why it was so natural for me. The reason that the the reason that the the, the LDS do the the uh, genealogy is so they can search out the bloodlines, okay, and they can find the most pure. Uh, reptilians, because the more reptilian DNA that you have, the easier it is to be uh, to be controlled. See, basically, there's two races on the planet. There's the, the humanoids, or the humans, and the reptilians. And the reptilians are and they're hybrid children. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, <laughs> like uh, there, there's an individual that came to Yentai's meeting that's a hybrid. Okay, and he's got a tail. And it's it's interesting, um, and he knows it. He he knows he's a he's a uh, reptilian. Everything is based on fear. When you're dealing with the reptilians, from you know the off-worlders, the the dark agenda ones, the dark overlords, uh, the Ankara system, you know all of the above. Whatever words you want to do, it's part of our play. It's part of what we wrote in, and volunteered for. But the human reptilian conflict has been going on for millennia and on many different worlds. I have never seen a reptilian per se. Uh, they have the ability to take on a human shape. They, they're shape shifters and they they literally can um, shape shift back into their their native mode uh, and there are eyewitnesses that have actually observed this and uh, Basically, I believe that the Illuminati is basically made up mostly of these reptilians that are, are in this Illuminati. Not to say that all reptilians are bad, they're not. Okay? There's, I, I suspect there's reptilians in, even within the Open Mind Forum. Okay? And even the scientists will tell us that, that even the human brain stem is of reptilian origins. Basically, uh, obviously the Bush family uh, the Rockefeller family, uh, the Queen of England, Tony Blair, uh, basically most of the, the, the main leaders of the, of the world are basically in on this Illuminati conspiracy. Sometimes I'm almost embarrassed being in the group with, you know, when there's anyone else is walking in, like say in the restaurant, and when we're talking something, that that you know, people I think were strange about, and that and that's something that they don't talk about, you know, in their in their work day or to their friends about. That people are looking at us like we're strange, and uh, I'm trying to overlook that. Sometimes I'm kind of getting a chuckle, I guess, to the fact that some of the things that Jim is talking about <laughs> is a little bit crazy, and and not even a fruitcake. choose to live in that higher vibrational frequency 
and I am totally different than I've ever been and totally grateful. There are people in my life who believe I'm totally insane. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> totally the crowd. My sister is a very staunch Mormon and she sort of ridicules everything that, that I believe. Um, and Marjorie's family, for the most part, uh, felt that I was uh, I was girl. crazy. Right Happy hey. birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Joey! Happy my children, uh, they they won't let me talk to my grandchildren because they're afraid that I will talk to my grandchildren about UFOs. And they say, Mom, you just, you can't talk about the crazy stuff. <laughs> okay, what's the crazy stuff? Well, you know, Mom. You mean the UFOs and, and the extraterrestrials? Yes, Mom, you can't talk about that to the children because they're going to believe you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't. What does your um, husband think of the open mind for? Uh, he'll occasionally go when I kind of drag him kicking and screaming depending on who's speaking. I'm not sure if any of the brethren over at the church when he would go would say, can't you get your wife under control? But uh, that was said to him at, from one of the guys at work. And we're like, there was one this one time when uh, I think at the corner of my eye I seen somebody enjoying the food go, <laughs> and then finally Jim said something like that. Remember that? <laughs> It's like, uh, I, I, I can kind of like, uh, since there's sort of a pact here, that, you know, when there's like a lot of people that agree on the same thing, I think it kind of helps people maybe not be so embarrassed. So I was like, uh, in my Scientology training, you, uh, you learn to block out a lot of things. And then I, I have another daughter in Oregon that she won't even let me sit next to the child. <laughs> I'm grateful for the people who think I'm totally insane because they they make me evaluate. Okay, who will, who am I really, and what is it I really believe? See, what is it? Damn it! <laughs> what is it that I really believe? Honestly, here. And here, what is it I really believe? <clears throat> when you're when you're talking about a a, a radical shift like this, you're talking about uh, people that have held power for centuries and centuries, and now all of a sudden they're going to be asked to give up that power. Do you think they're going to go down, uh, you know, without kicking and screaming? Well, we, we may have to have some Uzis to back it up. Well, I, uh, I don't think we're going to need to do that, Sherlock. Oh, okay. Okay. But I know there's plenty of patriotic Americans out there that, that uh, would not be uh, adverse to picking up a gun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but uh, I, I honestly don't believe we're going to have to shed any blood. Uh, That's good. Or very little. Back ten years ago, <coughs> when we were into the doom and gloom and the survivalist mentality, and guns and butter, you know, get your food storage and get your guns and your ammo because uh, we're going to head for the hills, you know, we're going to take on the whole government, right? Been there, done that. We've been there, done that, right? Yep. Okay, I had an arsenal in my basement that would make, that I could outfit a small army. I'm yeah, not, and I'm not joking. See, but the problem is, is that someone always will have a bigger gun than you. That's exactly what I came to realize is, <laughs> and you know, it, it was, a, it was a highway patrolman one time, was, he said, he said, Jim, because I, I, I made a, a stupid statement like, like I do sometimes, I said, you know, if this happens, I'm going to just barricade myself in my house, and they're just like, he says, yeah, you know what they'll do, they'll come with a tank and they'll just blow your door off. <laughs> you know, and he's right, right isn't he? Got a bigger gun. Because there's always going to be somebody with a bigger gun, right? Right. <laughs> So is violence the answer? <clears throat> no, no, absolutely not. Uh, we just heard of some some uh, events that happened just yesterday. Uh, we heard that uh, 
actually uh, Mr. Cheney was put under house arrest by white knights and also um, Mr. Rumsfeld may be sharing that same fate. It sounds pretty good. So Dick Cheney has got better. <laughs> How come they didn't do that to Skull and Bones Bush there yet? Well, because he still has a key role in all this, and uh, the plays the play is still playing out, and uh, he may end up yet playing a, a major part in this. Okay. Okay. So uh, you know we can't count him out of the game yet. Okay. But uh, under Nassara, uh, Mr. Bush, in fact, all of their resignations have already been videotaped. They're already they're already in the Library of Congress. They uh, they've all uh, put their resignations out there, and we will be seeing those resignations on all major television networks very soon. Hey, hey that sounds. Good. Sounds great. Sounds like we're eventually going to take our country back, and then once we take our country back, my talk, show, my uh, my duty as a talk show host to expose all this corruption will come to an end at that time, and then I'll have to develop a new format and get, maybe get into pro wrestling uh, announcement, announcing or something. Bill, your turn. You got ten minutes at least. Use it wisely. I always do, Sherlock. You know that. <laughs> Okay. I'd like to ask your guest, you say you believe in the Constitution of the United States? Absolutely. Explain to you. me how an act of where all the uh, government uh, resigns is in compliance with the Constitution. That's a good question, Bill. That's a really good question. Uh, basically, uh, the... It's not there, is it? What isn't there? The, the 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 ability of of uh, forcing all of the government to resign. There is a procedure spelled out in the uh, the body of the Constitution, section one and section Article one, Article two, Article three, that tells how anyone that resigns or if they kick somebody out on you know like they did traffic camp, then there is a procedure they have to follow. Well, Another they, thing, if Alan Greenspan was to be the one to announce it, isn't Alan Greenspan the mouthpiece for the group, the Federal Reserve, that you guys hate so badly? And you're going, you're claiming that he is going to be the one that announces the change? And, it, and they blow up two towers, kill 3,000 people to muffle that announcement. Why couldn't they just say, whoops, Greenspan's in the hospital. He's had a stroke, and that would delay it any any time that they wanted to. Well, I, I think your 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 view is is very narrow and, and very. My good view is not narrow. My view is in compliance with the Constitution. Bill, your 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 view is out of compliance, and therefore a criminal act. Okay, Bill. Well, thank you for your comments. Now, my ten minutes isn't up yet, is it, Sherlock? Well, you got about six more. Okay. Well, let me let me just say this: that that uh, you're looking th at things the way they're supposed to be in as a constitutional republic. It is actually being restored to the original constitution. By whom? By the the white knights. Who are they? The white the, the white knights of Columbus. Uh, that's pretty cute, Bill. Now, the White Knights basically are a uh, coalition of people in our government. Uh, a lot of a lot of military people. Your speak ten for minutes you. are up there, Bill. We got to go to the next caller. I'll leave on this note. We are blessed to have a channel, a very clear channel that uh, resides in Colorado, and we were fortunate enough to to sit uh, with St. Germain on Sunday night, and I'd like to give you a brief report. The changes that a lot of you are experiencing, the dizziness, the headaches, the sleepless nights, and all this, uh, expect more of the same, with more intensity, with time speeding up more and more as we, as we come down the funnel's neck, okay? We are also looking forward to a, a step up in help from our galactic friends, okay, because 
Mr. Bush continues to pursue his, his insane drive to, to start a war on this planet. And St. Germain says, it ain't going to happen, guys. We may get right to the brink, but it is not going to happen. War has been canceled on this planet. The latest Dove report that came out this morning said that the, the U.S. military, 95% of them are on our side. They want Nassar. Okay, they may not they may not know about Nassar, but they want what Nassar represents, which is freedom, liberty, freedom from war, prosperity. Okay, I mean, who in the right mind wouldn't want that? Who wants who wants the old paradigm? Who wants to go on with this this bullshit of of having no money, having to constantly fight? all these useless wars that we never win, they won't let anybody win, making bombs and missiles and, you know, Sending your kids to be slaughtered while yeah. others go off to college exactly. or some other place. It's like, how many people want that? Raise your hands. 80% taxation. Yeah. 80% taxation. How many people want that? Okay. In your face government. All right. And we yet, have to give up our freedom because we want security. And yet, there's people, there's people in this, in our own midst, that are actively promoting anti nasar And I have to wonder, what is their motive? What are they thinking? They aren't. What are they thinking? What? Why would somebody be anti something that has so many positive benefits? Mind control. They're under mind control. Mind control. Okay. Well, could it be that maybe they have a a secret agenda? Okay. No, I think they're just ignorant. I don't. No, I I, I can't buy that. Ignorance. <laughs> maybe they haven't seen the law that was passed. I I can't I can't I can't buy that. I can't buy it. I mean, it, we can't, we just aren't not going to let the, the dark overrun us, okay? We know what they have planned for us, don't we, okay? We've all heard the horror stories about the railroad cars and the shackles and the guillotines and the, 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 the camps and all that stuff, right? Okay? No. That's not in my reality. That's right. You don't want to go there, do you? No. Okay? Well, trust me, they have those things. On one hand, um, I am an optimist, and I feel that it's going to be possible, that it is going to come forth, that it is going to work, and that we will become sovereign, and we will have the ascension of the earth into a paradisiacal glory, and that we will be with uh, Jesus as our leader. Um, but if it should not happen, then the earth will be destroyed. Now is the time to make your choice. Exactly. Now is the time to knock down the fence. You're either on one side or the other. You can't sit on the fence any longer because there ain't no fence. <laughs> it just isn't there. You're either for or against, period. This is the choice. And this is where the laws have been drawn. What, what did God say about fence sitters? I would that you be either hot or cold. If you be lukewarm, I will spew you out of, my out of my mouth. Right now, we need to be totally focused on Nasara and what we want, okay? Fighting over <laughs> Any little doubt, now this is a heavy statement. Any little doubt that you have, thoughts or things, okay? Every little doubt means that you are serving the dark side. The dark, dark, dark side. Any little doubt okay. about anything or just about... Now that's a that's a heavy <laughs> okay. condemnation, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Remember in June, fear is the mind killer. That's right. Ooh, I am your father. That's right. Yeah, that so, have faith. so make All sure. All movies lead you to that. Is what it's about, so make sure that you're protecting yourself every day and monitoring your thoughts. And if any of those negative thoughts creep in. Use the violet flame of transmutation to instantly transmute that. I'd say that um, 
I've had I've had fleeting doubts, but you know I always go back to the fact that you, you know, know in your heart. that we know that we know that we know that yes. this is going to happen. Yes. There, there's never been any long-term doubts in my heart. Is that the same for your Marjorie? Yes, it is. It is. With all my heart, I have no doubts. I'd say it's more frustration than doubt. It's just, why can't they do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the big thing. He gets frustrated. <laughs> He's anxious, as we all are. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder if it's really going to happen. Because I feel that if it had happened a year ago, if, if they had taken the bull by the horns and done it a year ago, that we would be much further. But by the delays, they have weakened the whole thing. And by they, I mean the impending forces. Father, I just want you to try to hone yourself now and just have A, B, C, D. How many minutes are we away from and what's being mobilized right now to actualize Nasara on screen? In the right next now. 24 hours would be nice. Right now, there are 200 million motherships in orbit around your planet that are at least 5,000 miles in diameter, if not more, besides all the billions of interuniversal forces that have come in. At the same time, the white knights are mobilized. <laughs> white knights are mobilized with intergalactic communication technology where they can instantly interact with all of us. We take a moment to drink some water. Uh, everybody that is that believes in a, in a Christian uh, faith, uh, they're all looking towards the return of the, the their Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> what makes you think that Jesus Christ isn't already on the way? Okay, Mike, and <clears throat> what I'm telling you right now is that Jesus Christ along with a lot of other helpers is here right now working with the White Knights and they are going to restore this nation, this world to a free and sovereign uh, planet again like it was designed to be. Okay, We are talking about superior forces uh, you know we, we've been hearing the reports here and there about Reports of blue streaks over Washington D.C. that that the F-16s couldn't keep up with. Uh, I I personally witnessed uh, a flyover uh, by UFOs during the uh, 2002 Olympics. I saw uh, the the uh, jets scramble out of Hill Field. Fifteen uh, F-16s flew over, uh, scrambling to try to chase these things. Uh, these forces are here, and and these are the. These are the, the forces that I'm talking about. Jim? Yes. Uh, you know, me and RJ, while, we, uh, while RJ and I agree on a lot of things, there are a few things RJ and I butt heads against. You know, RJ's a good, dear friend, okay? But, you know, uh, if you're familiar with Iron Mountain Report. I, I was very familiar with the uh, Iron Mountain Report. And that was one of the dark agenda plots was to stage a phony alien invasion. If you look at if you look at what's been portrayed in the media, how the how the aliens have been portrayed, it's yet it's generally in a in a in an unfavorable light. Uh, the aliens are here to uh, you know impregnate our women and cut out our rectums and and mutilate our cattle. And I believe this is all part of the. Uh, of the dark agenda plot. However, we don't look at the other side of the equation. I've seen E.T. also by uh, Steven Spielberg, and I think that's just a movie, but if you expect me to believe some of this stuff, uh, you're singing to the choir when it concerns me. So uh, that's why I say, uh, well, if that's where you're heading, you're going to discredit your whole organization. But well, go ahead. I guess that, I guess that's a matter of opinion. Greetings, we come again with much to tell you. 
Momentous and long for events have moved another step closer to being manifested. Most important is the official recognition of our existence Ooh, yay. and the positive role that we have played in shaping your new transitional government. All right. A wondrous and extraordinary destiny awaits you, dear hearts. As we have said many times, first contact is simply the final positive sign that is in, in, indeed unfolding. Soon we shall all be together. And the great celebration will finally begin. Today we have shown you that truly remarkable events are about to transpire. Fantastic, isn't it? Okay, here's the latest news I got off Reuters today. That uh, the intelligence community has been um, alerted that the Bush is going to try to start this war on hell or high water. He doesn't care how many weapons inspectors... Uh, he doesn't, care, he doesn't care how many people demonstrate in the streets. He's going to start this war, and the date is the 26th, which is Sunday. Okay. January. But we've been told by Saint Germain that this will not occur. That if it, if anything is tried, it's going to be stopped. So yes, it is. I'm, yes, I'm it looking is. for possibly by Sunday we can have an armada of ships in the skies. Remember when you're little kids and how you'd be off in your little world and you'd be playing with your little imaginary friends and then uh, you'd just be building this beautiful world and then mom would come in and Johnny clean up your room and there goes your whole dream <laughs> just shatters right on my orders coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war these are opening stages of what will be a broad and concerted campaign. You white knights had better get your priorities straight and stop delaying this era because you are afraid to take action now that the Bush gang thugs have managed to beat you to the punch and are attacking Iran. The Bush gang launched the attacks this week precisely to try to cause you white knights to delay Nassara. The Bush gang beat you to the punch on 9-11-2001. Are you going to let them beat you again? What a ridiculous and cowardly excuse to delay removing the Bush gang thugs from our government. Well, what I'm hearing from a lot of people today, especially light workers, is that, is that a lot of people are discouraged because we had expectations that this war was going to be stopped. And it wasn't. So uh, anytime we put expectations on things, it sets us up for disappointment. Okay, we don't have to be part of this war. In fact, I look at it as a movie. It's a movie going on. It's not even part of my world. Okay, and every time the news comes on and, I, and they say, "Here's an update on the war," click off goes to another channel. I don't listen to it. Okay, it's it's not part of my reality. Okay, it, it doesn't have to be part of any of your realities. Okay. <coughs> We have no right to judge what's going on, okay? Maybe those people in Iraq are had a contract to go through this. Think about that, okay? Do we have a right to intervene in that? No, okay? Everything is, is playing out according to divine plan. The problem I'm having with this, Jim, is that certain things were said that this definitely is going to happen, and now there's this total shift. Well, who said it, though? The word, as I understood it, was there will not be a war. It will well, not you, be allowed to Okay, happen. and you were placing expectations on those words, right? Yes. Okay, and that's why you were set up for disappointment. Okay. It's still we have no right to, to even have any expectations. Okay. <coughs> we, we don't know what the full plan is. We don't know how it's all going to unfold. Uh, we we have to go with the flow because plans change. And I am I am comfortable within myself. I've got this <coughs> and I'm centered. Right. But still, if there's a, a feeling of 
why why is one thing said and it doesn't come about? Agency. Damn. Free agency. <laughs> you know, we live in a free will. We wanted this to, for this experience, okay? We came here for this experience. We said we don't want anybody intervening in our affairs. We want to work this out ourselves, okay? And they're honoring that, okay? They have to honor the prime directive, which is according to our will, according to the mass consciousness. Now, we can, all we can do is, is put in our two cents and vote our content. Uh, we can participate in our peace rallies. And, and uh, uh, support. I support, what, what I'm supporting right now is an effort by one of our congressmen to impeach Bush. Okay, I think that has a pretty good chance that it might, it might happen. And all you're seeing in Iraq is whack the dog. It, it's smoke and mirrors because there are others over there saying, no, there's nothing happening. No, there's nothing happening. Boom, boom, boom. How do we know that cruise missiles aren't flying into Baghdad and, and there's uh, <coughs> of uh, energies that are, that are causing these, these missiles to explode in the air without killing anybody? We don't know. We don't know what's going on over there. And then all of a sudden, on cue, the little, the little news people say, Oh, yes, there it's going off. Oh, I heard it now. Oh, jeez. Get a clue. John, you got ten minutes. Use it wisely. Then we got to go to Ann, which she probably have only about four minutes. But go ahead. Yeah, Jim. Uh, I'm kind of curious about what you call the bottom line. Or how happy everybody's going to be when they get the biggest piece of money that's being taken out of taxes. Everybody's going to have twice as much, right? Well, yes, because <clears throat> what's going to happen when you... Uh, let me tell you what's going to happen. And, and, and I know you're smart enough to know this. I mean, you talk about the Federal Reserve and how they can create money out of nothing. And when you increase that money supply, the prices go up. What, what do you think is going to happen when you've got a full employment economy already and you introduce that much money into the pockets of the consumers? There is no, there is very little, very little extra production out of the economy against because the money's there. All that happens is the prices go up. That's all that happens. Well, that's a pretty uh, negative outlook, I think. But I want to point out that you haven't thought this through very well. So what you're proposing is coming down, the speculation of your the, the crisis. No, this, is, this isn't speculation. Now, this is going to happen. I can tell you that if you are foolish enough to step forward and follow this divinity that's coming, as you say it is, then you belong in hell, which is where you're going. Well, that's a strong judgment, isn't it? I bet it is. If, if, if you are going to follow these, this group that you say are coming as the true Christ, if you can't discern the true Christ from more than that, based on some half-washed arguments about the Federal Reserve Board and the Luciferian government that we have, you're going to go straight to hell, boy. You're going to go straight to hell. That's your opinion, sir. Yes. You have a right. You have a right to your opinion. It is my opinion. All right. Is that the only point you wanted to make? Can we move on to the next caller, Sherlock? That's up to John. You got four minutes left. Uh, we'll let this end. I guess. Well, I'm going to go to the restroom. We were told uh, in, in numerous one of the updates that we were to start meeting together with uh, with other people of like mind, like like meeting going to the peace rallies, um, meeting with these different people, we would be amazed how many people ever says, oh, is that just, someone said, is, is this just this one group? And I said, oh, no, there's hundreds of us that believe this way. Hundreds. We just don't know where they are yet.
scheduled and may happen as early as Friday or Saturday. They hope, they think they have all the pieces in place. And this is one of the things St. Germain kept telling us is that all the, pe the puzzle pieces have to fall in place before the announcement can happen. Okay, so it looks like they got everything under control. But there's only that one last bucket wrench they can throw in there. So, anyway, I hope that gave you a little hope. And I know Tiny's tired of waiting. It's been waiting since 93. Yeah, I know. It's been a long, hard pull. <clears throat> okay. I want to bring up our uh, guest speakers tonight.